Hello guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to install PDAL, create a simple pipeline and create a geotiff representing a digital terrain model using just ground points of a classified LiDAR point cloud file. PDAL is short for Point Data Abstraction Library. PDAL is similar to GDAL the Geospatial Data Abstraction Library used to process and handle raster and vector data, or like MDAL, which is the Mesh Data Abstraction Library for handling unstructured mesh data. PDAL is a C++ BSD library for translating and manipulating point cloud data. Its simplicity, albeit the intricacies underneath the so-called pipelines, makes it an easy, powerful, free, and open source option to process LiDAR data. By the way, currently there is a crowdfunding project led by Lutra Consulting, North Road, and Hobu aimed to integrate PDAL to QGIS. The integration will include a visualization and styling tool of point cloud data. So uh, let's get started. The quickest and easiest way to install PDAL is using a Conda environment. To start, just download the appropriate version of Conda for your machine. For this example, I'm using Miniconda, which is a small version of Anaconda that includes Conda, Python, and other basic packages. With Anaconda, the full version, you have more than 700 packages for scientific computing. In my case, I'm going to download the Windows version. And I'm going to choose the Miniconda installer. In my case, I need the 64-bit version. We want Miniconda because for PDAL, we just need Conda, but using Miniconda, you can install separately as, or as a whole all the packages included with Anaconda. Now, with Conda, you can set up a new working environment and inside you can install PDAL. It is recommendable to never use your base install or base environment. An environment is like a micro operative system where you can install packages and run programs and commands. Conda is an open source package management system and environment management system. And as such, it helps you to find and install packages so you don't have to worry about all this. Once the installation is complete, you can just finish the installation and start working right away. If you are in Linux or Mac OS, after you install Miniconda, open a new terminal to start working. In Windows, open the Miniconda shell by searching for it in the search box of your taskbar. With the following command, you create a new environment. You can create as many environments as you wish. The following environment will be created to work with pet pedal, but you can use this command to create other environments for other purposes. First, let's check if the installation is up and running. Just write conda info. and a bunch of information should appear. The next step is to create the environment itself. In this case, I will create an environment called Tutorial. To do that, type conda create dash n tutorial dash 
Y and press enter. N refers to the name of the environment and Y is an instruction to let Conda know that you do not need uh, to be asked for confirmation for any prompt. Now let's install PDAL inside your activated environment. Once you created your environment, you just have to activate it to start working inside of it. To activate your environment, just type conda activate and the name of the environment, in this case tutorial. You will notice that the name of the environment appears at the beginning of the command line in parentheses. Now, to install PDAL, you just have to type inside your working environment conda install dash c conda forge pedal dash y c refers to the name of the channel or repository where conda will fetch the packages for pedal now we just need to press enter to start uh, installing PDAL. CondaForge is the name of the channel or repository. In this case, it's a community-led GitHub organization containing repositories of Conda recipes such as PDAL. Finally, dash Y was an instruction to let Conda know that you do not want to be asked for any confirmation. Wait until the installation is finished. Finally, you can ensure that PDAL works by listing the available drivers. Inside your working environment, in this case, tutorial, just type pedal dash dash drivers. The first obvious step to create a working folder where you can save all your information. You can do it directly on the command line or using your OS desktop manager. In this case, I'm gonna create a new folder in my documents folder. That is going to be called tutorial. And then I will uh, change directory to that folder. You can do the same thing using your uh, the Windows Manager. PDAL uses the concept of pipelines to describe the reading, filtering, and writing of point cloud data. A pipeline consists of a chain of processing elements, arranged so that the output of each element is the input of the next. The name is by analogy to a physical pipeline. A PDAL processing pipeline is represented in a JavaScript object notation file, better known as JSON, which is an open standard file format and data interchange format. It uses human readable text to store and transmit data objects consisting of attribute value pairs and array data types. It is object oriented and you can describe anything by following the standard formatting. For instance, you can describe an individual's attributes. For PDAL, the structure may either be a JSON object with a key called pipeline or directly using a JSON array. To create a pipeline, 
you just have to write some sentences into a text file. In Windows, you can use Notepad. Or you can use Notepad++. If you are using a Mac, you can use a text edit. Just be sure that every time you type something, you remember to change the format and make it a plain text. This will allow you to save your file as a Unicode UTF-8 file and you can add the extension that you wish. In a Mac, you can also download this uh, text editor, which is similar to um, Notepad++. To create a pipeline, you just have to write some sentences, sentences into a text file. Copy the following text into a text editor. Convert it into a plain text if necessary and save it as test.json. Obviously, you want to save it inside your new folder. As you can see, if you are using Notepad++, actually the text is formatted accordingly to the extension that you use to save it. I let you a link in the description in the, of this video to download a copy of this file. This file is a big array. You know this because it starts and finishes with square brackets. Inside this array, we have several objects, each defined inside curly brackets as a collection of name-value pairs. As you may notice, each object has a key called type. In this case, the type corresponds in PDAL to what they call drivers. Each driver is specific function or command in PDAL. Our first object is defined as a driver type called readers.ept. PDAL will interpret this object as a task to import data from an online source file name each defined inside curly brackets as a collection of name-value pairs. As you may notice, each object has a key called type. In this case, the type corresponds in PDAL to what they call drivers. Each driver is specific function or command in PDAL. Our first object is defined as a driver type called readers.ept. PDAL will interpret this object as a task to import data from an online source file name, but rather than taking the whole dataset, it will focus on defined boundaries, defined as a pair of arrays where the first array refers to the minimum and then the maximum x coordinates and the second 
to the minimum and then the maximum y coordinates. These coordinates are in EPSG 3857. This LiDAR file has been classified. In this case, it's also in JSON format. I want to produce a hill shade of the bare earth model. To do that, we create another object where I can filter the data using a driver called filters range. where the limits of the classification ranges from 2 to 2. That is, this will filter the point cloud and will work only with the classification number 2, which will always refer to the ground in LiDAR terms. The pipeline will run each driver object separately, but in sequence. Hence, from this filtering, I can create another object with the driver writers.las to generate a new LiDAR file only with ground points. I will call the filtered point cloud object. As you notice, I used a tag key with the value classify. I can use this variable in the next object. So from this object to this one. First, I define a name for the new LiDAR file, which will be stored in the working folder where the test.json file is. Then using the key inputs, I will call the object target as classify. Then I will tag this new object as writer's last. Finally, I use a driver to process this object information. The last object will do something similar. But in this case, we will call the object tagged as writer's last and the name of the file is a geotiff raster called test.tiff. The rest of the options are related to the driver type writers.gdal, which will generate the tiff. Now you know more or less what constitutes the pipeline. Now it's time to run it. To run the pipeline, you just have to invoke the command inside your environment in Conda or Miniconda. To run the pipeline JSON file that I just described, go back to the command line. Remember that we were working in the environment tutorial inside the folder tutorial and pedal is already running. So we just need to, uh, and just be sure that inside your folder tutorial, you have the JSON file that you just created. Now you just have to type pedal pipeline to invoke the file and write test.json. And in my perspective, it's uh, very handy to add. So you can run this as it is, but uh, I prefer to write also dash dash debug. So to see the entire process of creation or just to check for errors. And then you just have to press enter.
with the debugging, you can see what the program is doing. So PDAL is running the pipeline and started running the readers.ept driver. And the query bounds are the bounds that we defined, plus the C values or set values of this model. We didn't write them, so the program considers uh, n quantity of values. And it's telling us that this uh, pipeline is running in stream mode, which means that it's in sequence. The query bounds are uh, really important if you are managing EPT files, because most of these files I will show you uh, in the meantime. So I will show you where I got these uh, EPT files. So this uh, web page from USGS Endwine includes uh, 1,288 resources and in total it's uh, like 21 trillion points. So in this case we are using a database of this region Um, but if you use all these regions, so I'm going to click on it. It's called USGS LPC. Just, I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to filter this. So as you can see, each of these data sets. So the one that we are using is actually this one the South Plate River Lot 5. It has 33 billion points. So unless you have a very, very, very powerful computer and you don't want to uh, spend all day waiting for the data to be available in your um, computer, uh, it's very, very useful to just use boundaries. The link for this file, it's available just by uh, copy the link in the EPT column. And you have also these uh, other versions. So actually, if I click on Pottery, uh, I can visualize the layer. I'm going to check again if this is done. Okay, it's done. So we can see that it growed uh, 6 million points. So now let's see what did create. So if we see the folder, uh, the program will create two files. So one file is the uh, CPET last file, which is this one and a DEM raster file, which is this one in GOT format. Now, we can visualize this file, the TIFF file, in QGIS. So let's see how it looks. So I already opened my QGIS. I'm just going to drag this layer. So this is uh, my file. It's a normal DEM file. Uh, let's uh, visualize it as a heel shade. So if you just go to styling and you change from single band gray to heel shade, um, there you go. So I'm gonna add a background layer so you can see more or less what does it mean to classify and in this case, just to show the ground. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, deactivate the test. I'm gonna zoom in here. So for instance, here you have a bunch of houses and trees. The digital terrain model 
will not include the trees and most of the houses features are gone here you can see the difference and that's it if you want to visualize the point cloud, you can use tools such as plus.io. So just to show you quickly plus.io. So you go to this web page and you accept to store files on this device. Uh, this visualization tool only works on Chrome and then in here you can browse in your computer so I'm gonna go to documents it was called tutorial and the file that we created is test.las open it wait a second and there you go so this is your point cloud that you created without uh, trees or houses. So as you can see, it's very quick. There are some other options that in another video we can explore. So that's it and thanks for watching. in my eyes